Hi, this is Jay from Encodium. Um, this video is going to show you how to um, create an email and add multiple attachments to that email. Uh, we're seeing quite a lot of requests at the moment, both um, to our support and also on the community about how to do this. And it's um, whilst it's pretty straightforward, there is a little bit of complexity in there, which I think is catching a few people out. So let's um, let's create uh, a new flow and we'll demo this. So we call it demo email attachments and I'm going to manually trigger it just for this example um, for this I'm going to pick up some um, uh, attachments from a SharePoint list item uh, not items, sorry it's the wrong action get item was the one that I wanted get item, so I'm going to, I'm going to get a SharePoint item and then I'm going to retrieve the attachments from that particular item so here we go uh, community and I know the ID. Obviously in a real world scenario you probably might trigger this from a SharePoint item changing or something similar but this will do for these purposes. Um, I need to get the attachments from um, from the list item. So again let's just quickly set this up and same list name, same ID Actually, I could just pass in the ID from get. I mean, actually, strictly speaking, I wouldn't need the get item. I could just do get attachment straight from, but that could be quite useful sometimes. Right, so now I need to get the attachment content for each. Um, so this is, I've got the attachments, but I actually need to go and get the file content for those attachments themselves. Now, what's going to happen this time, this should go into an apply to each loop. Uh, so let's do, again, list name. Uh, community so the ID should be the ID of the list item and the file identifier will be the file identifier ID from the get attachment so there we go so now what's going to happen I've got the SharePoint item I've got all the attachments attached to that item which in this instance I think is three um, scroll down we've got demo document spreadsheet and so on and so forth uh, let me just bring that back to the right tab. Um, and then for each of those attachments, we're actually going to retrieve the file. Now, I'll jump down here. I'm going to do send email. And make sure you do it with the uh, Office 365 one because that accepts multiple attachments. And email with attachments. Struggling with spelling this morning already. Not a good sign. And down the bottom, you'll see I've got this option here to send attachments. And you'll notice that I can type one in directly or I can pass in an array of attachments. And I think this is the bit that's catching a lot of people out. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump back up to the top of my flow and I'm going to create a variable. Uh, and this variable I'm going to call attachments, attachments even, attachments, attachments, whichever you want to say. Uh, a type array and I'm going to use this to store each of the attachments okay so um, what I now need to do is somehow append each of those files that I've got get attachment content for into this uh, this variable which is fairly straightforward here's a trick for you um, what I do need to do is kind of work out what the format of this JSON is and the simplest way of doing it is do this. Put a bit of content into attachments name, attachments content, then click switch to an array and you'll notice that it shows you the actual JSON. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to delete that array because I don't want that in there. And then I'm going to go back up to here and I'm going to add an action and I'm going to call it append to an array variable. And I'm going to append to attachments wherever it is. And in the value I'm going to put some stuff in here. I'm just going to get rid of those speech marks and the data so I won't need them. So when I drop in a, um, a, pro a dynamic property, it should, it should just sort that out for me. So if I look at my dynamic data, I can use the display name from get attachments. Perfect. That's the name of the file. And for content bytes is the file itself. So that's file content. So I'm going to use attachment content from get attachment content. And then down to send email to... I literally just need to pass attachments in. And that is it. Now, I'm going to save it and then I'm going to show you a slightly more advanced scenario for this. So whilst this gets sent through, and we'll check these emails that comes, comes in. 
I'll show you where some of these things can get a little bit complicated. I need the run history actually so I can show you what's happening. So you'll notice for get attachments content, sorry, let's have a look at pen to ray variable, you'll see that the file content writes in this uh, two properties, content type and content. So content type being the type of file, and then for content is the actual base64 file itself. Now, not all actions in Power Automate will return data in that format, and that's where it can get a little bit tricky. So if you're having problems with corrupt files, it's always worth checking what, what data you're appending. Now, I'm gonna show you, let's just see if this email's come through, which it has. So here's my demo email that's just been sent to me. So you can see the attachments have been correctly, uh, and if I launch one, you'll see we've got some of those data in there. So I can get rid of that, and I'll just get that out of the way as well. So that's all fine, those all have attached okay. Now, because, as I say, not everything's gonna um, put base64 in that way, Flow tries to do, um, interpret that data. So Without me garbling too much more, I'll, I'll show you what I mean. Let, let's take an encoding action and just do HTML to PDF. And we'll do something super simple. Uh, HTML.PDF output and we'll put P. Hello world. Very inventive. Ooh. So that's going to generate a new, a new file for me. And outside the apply to each loop, I'm just going to copy this append to array variable, copy to my clipboard. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to pop in this new action, add an action from my clipboard, append that in. Okay, right. Now, in this example, we're going to pass in the file name and then content bytes. Now this is where things are going to go a little bit awry. So let me just test this. What's going to happen, albeit the data that's passed in to that append to array variable, ah, if you've seen this error, you'll have seen it many times before, it's to do with when you add new connections to the flow and the flow does not like it very much. So the easiest way to fix it, it's not an encoding connector, it's any connector that you may have added to a flow after creation. The easiest way to fix this is to do a save as and I'll just call it I think number three because I think I did test this earlier, so I think I've already got a number two. So let me just save this and I'll delete this one. And you can see I have got a demo number two. Let's just turn this one on we just created. And we go back in and that will have resolved that problem. It's a pretty frustrating issue. I'm sure you've all encountered it. Right, okay, so let's test this again. I'm gonna to need to trigger it. When we run this through, what's gonna look like? The data's gonna look like it's gone through absolutely fine and it doesn't look like there's anything wrong with it um, per se. Um, we're passing what will, ha what will come from the encoding action will be a perfectly valid string uh, in terms of base64 file content. It's just what flow is gonna do, it's gonna try and interpret that flow and what actually happens is it takes that base64 string and it reconverts it um, and in effect corrupts that file. So it looks like it's run through and if you look at append array variable, that is if you hydrated that file, that would be perfectly valid. Um, but the email that I'm going to receive is gonna give me an error saying that it's corrupt, which is less than ideal. So let's just, let's just get rid of that. Um, how do we fix it? It's super simple. We just need to tell Flow not to do any, uh, anything clever with this file contents. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop a, an expression called base64 to binary. And by putting the two binary in, what we're saying to Flow is this, this is a file and this is base64, please do not do anything with it. So if I can get that to, to go away, and what this thing is, I'm gonna select file content this time in this expression and click OK. And I'm gonna test it again. We'll just wait for that to run through. 
And again, we'll just check that data and just to see if it's any different. It shouldn't be any different. There we go. Right, okay. So if I just scroll down, you'll notice this time it's wrapped it and put an optext string around it. So, but the file content itself in terms of the data is perfectly valid. Um, and now, if we go to our email with attachments, what we will see, if I click on html.pdf, you'll see that the PDF document that's been sent through is perfectly okay. So hopefully that covers off how to, um, you know, get attachments, build an array, um, add that, those documents to that array, as we can see here, and then additionally add, if you've got any files coming from any other direction, how you can add those files in as well so that they get attached to the email correctly without being corrupted. If you have any problems, um, obviously post on the Power Automate uh, community and um, myself or one of the other members will, will certainly try and help. Um, if you're working with Encoding Actions, of course, then feel free to email support encoding.com and uh, one of the guys in the team will, will, will help out.